I thought a lot about today, uh, over the last few weeks, not really knowing quite how it was going to happen, what was going to happen. And as Gustav said, don't worry, Rick, you're winging it like you normally do. And I guess, yeah, um, today is really about thanking all of you. And I, I mean, it's, it's not about me, um, <coughs> I'm just a bit part player. It's all about you because any success that we've had in the last 25 years is down to all of you. In one way or another. Everybody here has either worked for us over the last 25 years, or be a customer, or be a partner, and still is. <clears throat> and I often say to people that there's an argument, or there's a statement that goes around the world that says, you know, why is, it, why is a company in business? And the standard answer is to deliver shareholder value to the shareholders. That's bullshit. <laughs> We're in business for our customers. If we didn't have customers, we wouldn't have a business. The other thing we're in business for is to provide employment to people. Um, and with, without, you know, those are the two reasons we're in business, and that's what I believe. It's all about you. It's about customers and partners and, and, and the employees, the staff, or whatever you like. So this is all about you and a thank you to you. And, and that's the main purpose. I could actually go sit down now and, and carry on drinking, <coughs> but I'm not going to because. Over the, over the years, people have. I, I've got a habit of telling stories. And, and some of you received some of those stories over the years. And often people have said to me, Rick, you should write a book. And I said, no, there's loads of books. You know, there's nothing special about my life. There's loads and loads of books. And I don't know about you, anybody who's read typically biographies. Um, they're, they're typically whatever length they are, 200, 300 pages long. But once you've read the first hundred, yeah, there's nothing, nothing exciting about it, and they get boring. And I thought, no, what, what's the point? Um, but there again, what happens as I go through life is, is, is I, when I'm talking to people, when I'm advising people, mentoring whatever terminology I like to use, I use stories as an illustration. And, and so I thought what I'd do for a little while now, I'm not, Harold just asked me, was I going back 75 years? No. Um, but I thought I'd just sort of give you a little bit of background to who I am, where I come from. Toby showed a photograph of me when I was however old it was. Uh, you also saw a photograph of my father uh, being the gun carriage possession at King George's the, the sixth funeral. So <clears throat> I thought this is a little bit of background and then, and then bring up to date this, some of the experiences I've had. Um, I've had a great life and I'm only three quarters of the way through it. I'm not 75, I'm three quarters of a century old. Which means I've still got another quarter of a century to go. Uh, and that's, that's, uh, <clears throat> that's not negotiable. I made a promise to my grandson on the day he was born that I'll be there for his 30th birthday. Be nice to be. <laughs> and that's how I see life. It's, it's, uh, it's a continuum. And every now and again, it's good to look back because you learn so much, at least I have, from what you experience as you go through life. People have asked me, Rick, if you had a chance to relive your life, what would you change? And I say, nothing. Because all the bad experiences <coughs> are good learning experiences. And none of us have go through life on trust. I bet there's nobody here that's not had a bad experience in their life. And by the way, you'll have more. Because that's life. The key thing is to learn from it, learn from the mistakes or whatever it is, and go on <coughs> and, and use it as a building blocks. So that's certainly my, my, been my philosophy on that. So, as some of you know, I left school in 1966. That was 57 years ago. Okay, so I'm not going to go back 75 years, I'm only going to go back 57 years. Okay. Anyway, I left school in 1966 and I, and I went to the Royal Level College. And as you saw from earlier, my father was a Royal Navy officer, he was a captain of the Royal Navy. And my ambition was to become an admiral. Uh, so I was an ambitious bugger then. Uh, I know that I still am. And the objective there was to become an admiral. Why? Because my dad was a captain and I needed to do better than him. And that was the plan. Went to the college, <coughs> I graduated, commissioned, and all that good stuff. And then life changed. I got married when I was 22, just, and that was almost 54 years ago. 
I had my first child, you see somewhere, um, in uh, when I was 25. And suddenly my life changed. Uh, the idea of being a WFC and uh, was because the first 18 months of Alex's life, I was away for 15 of them. And that didn't seem like a very good way to be a farmer. So I resigned my commission. But those eight and a half years that I spent in the, in the Navy defined me. It taught me most of what I know about people, about life, about experiences. And, and virtually daily, I go back to the learnings <coughs> that I got in those eight and a half years. So that was very defining for me. People ask me, oh, do, you, do, you, do you regret the time in the Navy? I said, no, I don't regret and, and, and second of it, but I also don't regret having left because life moved on. I then went into the retail trade. For anybody uh, familiar with the retail trade in the UK, a company called John Lewis. Um, I joined them in a management training program. And I spent about three years with them, and that taught me three things. One, that I could sell. I was pretty good at it. Second, that I enjoyed it. And thirdly, I hated the retail trade. <laughs> the boss of the store I was working on, part of a management team that opened up a big new store in North London in whatever it was, 1970, no, yeah, 76. And after I had invited people in the department to take their business elsewhere on two occasions, they were treating my staff very badly, being rude to them, thinking that they could do that, and I said, please go and shop elsewhere. I did that twice, at which point the managing director of the company said, Rick, I don't think you'll cut out of this. <laughs> you can't do that. He said, I agree with you, but you can't do that. I said, OK. Anyway, I left and um, decided to have a good look around. I didn't do the answer that when I left there. I was certainly told Lewis because they offered a good management training program for ex service officers, etc. I thought, well, I'm not going to jump into anything else. So I spent six months, went for 27 interviews, was offered 25 jobs. At the end of it, I went back to the first job I've been offered, which was with Burroughs Machines Limited. Anybody go back that far? Uh, as a salesman operating out of the North London branch. I stayed with them until 1981, uh, when I was head into a company, uh, the International Division of the Company, was part of the McDonnell Douglas Group, better known for aircraft, manufacturing old aircraft and fighter jets and bombers. Um, <coughs> And I joined them in their international division with responsibility for the Middle East. And that was Iraq, uh, Saudi Arabia, UAE, Bahrain, Kuwait. Uh, it was a very, very different place then in 1981 than what it is today. Um, there are probably people here who've been to Dubai. From it, I trust you, it was very different uh, in 81. My 80s now. It has no soul. It's just big, loud money, wealth, and uh, lost its identity. So I went and started working out there, and after a couple of years, I said to the company, we should open a branch out there. So I opened up a branch for, for that company in Dubai in uh, 1983. Um, and then after about a year, I said, hmm, we're in the wrong place, we should be in Saudi Arabia. Because that's where the main market, very different today. <coughs> so I said, we should, open, we should move the office from Dubai to, to Riyadh, they said, good idea. I said, well, great, okay, but I'm not going to go and run it. Uh, I had no desire to live in Saudi Arabia with two young daughters. So I said, yeah, now what? He said, well, what are we going to do with you, Rick? I said, I don't know. So I'm not ready to go back to the UK. So they said, how about South Africa? So I said, that's interesting, never been there. Chachu's was a lie, because I came here in 1974 when I was the navigator of a frigate in the Royal Navy. Uh, but I couldn't know. So they said, well, and they just they opened up a subsidiary here in South Africa, the same company, the same year as I joined them and looked after the Middle East. Anyway, I came down here in September 84 uh, for a week. I looked around and thought, yeah, okay. They said, you're going to do it. I said, okay. And they said, you'll love that. It's the last outpost of the British Empire. I <laughs> thought <laughs> it was. Not the empire that I was familiar with, but the empire is sort of 25, 30 years ago. So we came to came here on a three-year contract in 1985, January 85, and we're still here. <laughs> we took our permanent residence in 87, 
And then in 1990, I started working in Joburg. The family stayed down in Durban because the girls were still at school. <coughs> and for three and a half years, I commuted for the first two and a half years every weekend by car from Joburg to Durban. In 60 Ks, the fastest, 600 Ks, the fastest I did it was four and a quarter hours. <laughs> Never again. <laughs> Never again. It was just too much effort. Anyway, I did that. And that was tough. Uh, yeah, that was tough. It was difficult to lead a normal life. We had to do that, or the decision was because Anna my younger daughter, still had three years of school to do it. And we didn't want to disrupt our education. So we got on with it, and I clocked <coughs> up some miles in an amazing Merc 280 SE tank. Uh, that uh, had something like 650,000 kilometers on the top of our river. So there I was in Joburg, <coughs> carried on working with the same company, and a bit later on, they, 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 never mind the hardware, it's all hardware, software hadn't really been invented.